Okay, Arc's signed in, and you are here for one of two reasons. One, you haven't bought Ghost of Shima yet, and you want to find out how it is. Or two, you have bought Ghost of Shima, and you just want someone else to validate your opinion on whether it's actually good or not. So even though I have a handful of subscribers on YouTube, and a handful of followers on Twitch, I'm going to give you my opinion anyway. So instead of wasting any more time, now that I've finished Ghost of Shima, let's review it. So I'm going to try and break this up into three nice, easy to consume parts. So we're going to start with story, then we're going to move on to graphics and details, and then it will be gameplay. So let's start with story. So when you start a story, you are Jin Sakai, the samurai. I don't know why I never noticed that, that actually rhymed. And you're thrown into this battle on a beach against the Mongols who've just invaded Tsushima, who are trying to invade Japan. But you're like at the front line, I think. I need to look into the history of the War of Tsushima, but yeah. You end up being the last living samurai on the island after being dragged away from the battlefield by a woman named Yuna who nurses you back to health. Last living samurai, so you think. But anyway, you now need to retake Tsushima from Koten Khan, cousin of Kublai Khan and the grandson of Genghis Khan. It's not the most original setup for a story, but it progresses and gets so much better from there. So now, you are in this huge open world of Tsushima, island world. We call it a world, it's an island. And just like most open world games, it has your main missions and then your side missions. Now the side missions are sort of broken up into two separate categories where you've got your main characters, side stories, and then you've got people around the island, their side stories that you can follow. And it kind of reminds me of Mass Effect, how you building a team for the end of the game, doing missions for these side characters to then have them join you in the last big fight. Now the side missions of the main characters aren't too lengthy, they can be, but the side missions that you find around the world with the people that live there, they can be quite short, which is a shame, but it doesn't let you down too much. Their stories are actually quite moving and you'll feel for these characters and you'll feel for Jin in their stories, if he has any emotional parts anyway in it. But you can feel these characters' pain and joy through Jin, if that makes sense. You'll get it. And there's not too many twists in the story at all, the main story that is. But there are a few parts that are shockers and there are a few parts that'll make you want to cry. I personally didn't. You can watch my entire playthrough. I don't know what that was, I think that was Bixby. So annoying. Now because I don't want to ruin too much of the story for you, I'm going to move on to graphics and details. Now even though Tsushima is an island, you'd think, uh, what is there to see? Like how varying can the landscape be? But you'd be wrong. There's actually quite a bit to see. Everywhere you go on the island, nothing really feels the same. You know you're somewhere else on the island, even though the entire place is just trees, rocks, and sand, and houses and tents, obviously. But nothing feels repeated. There's nothing repetitive about where you go. You will not get bored in Tsushima. One of the most beautiful things on the island is the flora, the trees, the plants, and my favorite, the grass. I absolutely love the grass in that game. It looks amazing. And of course, with so much vegetation and the kind of island it is, there's a lot of fauna as well. So you've got bears, boar, dogs. And you know what? I even noticed tiny little frogs in mud puddles which blew my mind. I was like, as if he thought to put something like that there. And they didn't fail at all when it came to lighting in this game. When you see the sun rays bursting through the canopy of treetops and between trees themselves, that's one of the moments when you realize how beautiful the game actually is. Especially at sunset or sunrise. That game's especially gorgeous at sunset or sunrise. And the detail doesn't just stop at the environment either. You've got your characters, obviously. And when you look at Jin's outfits, which he has loads of, you there's, there's quite a few to actually pick from, um, which can mix and match, by the way. Not heavily, but like you can change the helmet, the bodily attire, and the mask. But as you're moving about as Jin, you'll notice that every part of that outfit moves or is extremely detailed. I mean, you can just go straight into photo mode and zoom right in and just see how good the quality is of the outfits in that game. And I also noticed one little thing which seemed to blow my mind as well, is that there was a part where the horse was sort of interacting with Jin, sniffing him, and his nose touched the hilt of the sword, and it moved the sword. 
And that was another thing that I just thought, I can't believe he thought to put that in there. But yeah, the best way to get the true beauty of this game is by using photo mode, which I personally love. Photo mode is always the thing in games that I'm always looking for, especially in a game like this where the graphics are just insane. Unfortunately, I didn't actually play this on a PS4 Pro. I do not own one, so I just played it on a bog standard PS4. And now I think I'll move on to gameplay. Now, since you're playing the Samurai, obviously the main focus of the game is combat and your combat is broken up into four different stances. So you have water stance, moon stance, stone stance, and wind stance. Each of these stances are used to combat a different enemy type. So you can use stone stance against swordsmen, water stance against shieldmen, moon stance against brutes, or big boys as I like to call them, and the wind stance against spearmen. It took me a while to realize that you had to actually switch between stances during combat. I was so stupid. But when I say each of these stances works against each of their respective enemy types is that you will deal more damage towards their stance. So the best way to put it is use the right stance against the right enemy and you can take them down quicker. Simple as that. Now there are two more stances, which I'm not going to tell you about because I don't want to spoil the story of the game, but they are really cool. Now like I said, the big focus of the game is the combat and because they've worked so hard on it, I can almost guarantee you will not want to get out of a fight too soon or you will actually go actively looking for trouble. Now along with your regular combat you also have stealth which is quite commonplace in these sorts of games. In this game it's called Ghost. So you have Samurai and Ghost. I did have an issue with Ghost. It was fun, it was just too easy. You will find it a lot easier to tear right through a camp as Ghost rather than fighting every single enemy that's there. Now I'm not too sure how this is on hard mode. I did play this on medium. I can't remember what the names were for each difficulty type. But anyway, you get what I mean. Point is, I found it a bit too easy. It's not boring, it's just I wanted a bit more of a challenge when it came to sneaking around camps. And I think this mostly fell down to the fact that the enemies are oblivious to when their teammates fall. Don't get me wrong, if they see one of their comrades fall, they will run over, blow a horn, and then they'll actively look for you. But they'll more than likely struggle to find you. I can almost guarantee it if you go to stealth anyway. And just quickly back onto combat a second. I did have an issue with the camera. I'd be fighting enemies, and all of a sudden the camera would be behind a tree. And I'd be like, I can't see the fight. That was kind of irritating. It wouldn't meant I'd lose a fight but it was really irritating. Now, when you're making your way around Tsushima, looking for fights, you will be using different traversal methods, such as climbing and grappling and riding your personally named horse everywhere. Now, when you first look at Tsushima, you think everything just kind of looks flat-ish, but there are like cliff sides and buildings to climb and tree branches to sort of like grapple from and swing. You know when they take all these like little mechanics and sort of squash them together into these little areas when you're trying to get to shrine or an enemy on top of a hill or a cliffside. Traversing these little segments in the huge island can be really fun. That's when it kind of starts to feel a bit like a Tomb Raider game, which is also known for its traversal. And speaking of the grapple, Obviously you've got different utilities. So you've got like smoke bombs, kunai, wind chimes, a blow dart, and all these things are perfectly spaced throughout the first half of the game. And every time you get something, if you didn't know it was a mechanic in the game, you're sort of like, wow, this is something else I can use. Could there be possibly anything else they could give me? Unfortunately, each of these utilities didn't really serve a purpose in my playthrough. They're just a little bit trivial, to be fair. But you can use them on all the different enemies that come your way, especially if you just wanna have fun messing around with the mechanics of the game. And speaking of mechanics, I'm gonna talk about my favorite one, photo mode. Like I said, it's the one mode I always look for in every game, because I just, I wanna take amazing photos of the scenery and the characters and everything. Now it's not too far different from most photo modes that you've seen in games before. So you've got your focal lens, you can tilt the camera, you can zoom in, zoom out, that was the wrong way around. Zoom in, zoom out. And of course you've got all your different filters like you usually have in photo modes. Now there was one little feature which stood out to me in Ghost of Tsushima's photo mode, and that was particles. So while you've got your scene paused, already in place, cameras all set, you can activate the scenery. So everything's moving, such as the trees, the wind, the grass, even like little tassels and stuff on Jin's clothing. But then you can add particles such as leaves, bamboo seeds, I don't know if that was a thing, bamboo seeds, but <laughs> I think there was something like that. But when you adjust the slider for these particles, 
adding more and more and more particles or turning it down and having less and less and less, you can adjust the wind direction and strength to move these particles in different directions and have them in such a way that you want them to look in the photo. And that was something I don't think I've seen any other photo mode doing a game before. It is pretty amazing. So to summarize, the story is good. Although it starts out quite tropey, the graphics are unbelievable. And probably even better if you're playing on a PS4 Pro, which unfortunately I didn't get to do. And the gameplay is just mainly because of the combat, obviously. So I don't know whether I'm gonna keep this as a thing whenever I do a review. I have a little thing about ratings. But I'm gonna give this one an eight out of 10. Don't know whether I should really explain why I gave it that rating. Cause I'm not really too sure myself. You gotta make your own mind up, come on. I think if you want a better idea of what this game is and how it plays, is to check out my playthrough, which I'll link in the description down below. And I give a massive thanks to anyone that actually joined in on the stream, which I didn't get many, but I appreciate it so much. So now once this video is live and in the Ghost of Shima playlist, I'll be moving on to streaming until the next big game comes out, which will be, for me, Cyberpunk 2077. I will be streaming other games. And I'm gonna try and keep the biggest games that I'm most excited about as playthroughs, which I will still be streaming but I'll just be prioritizing them for YouTube. Also, I apologize for how terrible my reviews are. Watching it back, I've realized that I don't have much detail on what I'm trying to give you. Thinking off the top of my head is not my best trait at all. But anyway, if you've watched this video, thanks for watching. If you've made it to this point, after watching the entire video, massive thanks. One more thing, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give me a like. Drop a comment if you have anything to say about the review. And if you want to see more of my content, give me a sub. Also, you should definitely follow me on Twitch, you know, just because. Have a chat or something. But yeah, thanks. See you in the next one.